Hi guys, so today we're down in our ladies' island. Behind me there you can see the church and the village of our ladies' island. And just this is beautiful walkway around. And just up there is our ladies' island church, old church and graveyard. So what I'm going to do is bring you up along and see the church there, the new church, the village itself. But um, they do once a year a pilgrimage here and mass is said all around this little walk area, the island itself. But just up here and to the right is the old graveyard and the ruins, as I said, of the church. So just up here. And let's read a few of the headstones in here. And take a look. You can see they're actually the old style and you just get up and over the wall. But today I think we'll use the gate. Now the first thing I notice here is that it's all been cut down, but we have a fantastic smell of wild garlic here. But I'm going to bring you up along here to the top first. And just look at the views. And the walk goes right the way around here. And just here, they would say mass from inside. Um, I'll show you that before we leave. But it's a beautiful location. So just here we notice a slab on the ground erected in the memory of and then it looks like it's completely completely covered over time but it looks like it's Eleanor Wall 1850 something but it is completely as I said covered in the ground itself. So an old iron cross. This is Thomas Jackman, who died the 18th of March, 1963, and also his wife, Catherine, who died 1918, it looks like. We have a beautiful tomb here. I wonder would the torch be of any use? It seems to be very worn. Beautiful writing, erected by John Walsh, maybe, 1863. There is writing on the top. Here lies the body of Thomas Walsh. Looks like the 30th of April. Age 70 something. Also his wife, Alice. But everything else is weathered away. But it's a huge tomb. And that's just underneath the ruins here. Here lies the body of Thomas Pettit, departed this life January the 20th, 1800s, age 50. And there is other people there as well. But this is actually a headstone, crucifixion, our Lord, the sun and the moon. And this is by 
the renowned stonemason J. Burn that we have seen so many times. And beside that one, we have another one, and I'm presuming this is J. Burn as well. Once again, we have the sun, the moon, the crucifixion, we have the tools, serpent. And this is here lies the body of William Pettit, so obviously a relation. Uh, February 1803, aged 86, and also his wife, um, Eleanor, alias Hayes, 1802, it looks like, age 76. Lord have mercy on their souls. Isn't that beautiful? Now behind the pedits, we have another gorgeous headstone. Here lies the body of Anne Seventeen seventy-five. But just have a look at the detail there. And there's Anne. Not a hundred percent sure of the surname. Alias Sinnet. It looks like seventeen seventy-five. And that to me looks like it's also Jay Byrne who made this beautiful headstone. So we have more tombs on the ground here. This one is all split right down the centre. More just beside it. And some more headstones then as well. This is Patrick. 1804 aged it looks like it's 35 another one there beside it and this looks like it's michael boggan you can see the date there is 1763 now to me that looks like he was only 10 years old also, Catherine Boggan, aged 82. Don't see a date there. But that to me definitely looks like Michael was only 10 when he passed. Another cross, look at that one. No name on that one, but we have an iron one here. It looks like May Delaney, 6th of January. Looks like 1925, aged just eight months. Her brother Francis, who died the 18th of May, 1937, aged four years. And also their mother Mary who died 4th of March 1938, aged 34. So two small children, May and Frances and their mother, who was only 34 when she passed. She only died, the mother died a year after the four-year-old. Yeah. So let me see. May died in 1925, her brother Frances in 1937, and a year later, their mother passed. In 1938, aged just 34, so very, very sad there. But I'm glad to see that the writing is, is still readable. Now this one looks older, but unfortunately, it looks like everything is all but gone. I think there's an 1817 there, all right. And another old one, there's the maker's name, A. Ronan. Here lies the body of Richard Cloak, who departed this life, 1799, aged 25. Also, four children. Also the body of their mother, Catherine Cloak, alias Connick. No date there for Catherine. So very sad as well. Now it is extremely windy here and we are right beside the, the water. Another beautiful one. 
by Jay Byrne once again, the crucifixion, the sun and the moon. Um, here lies the body of James Flowers, who departed this life 29th of August, 1790. Just there, age 71. Also, Elizabeth Flowers, 1796. Aged, it looks like 26 years. And also Mary Flowers, 1797, age 60. And there's a William down at the bottom as well. And I think William died in 1798 and the age is gone. It sunk down to the ground. But look at that. Jay Byrne was gifted. Absolutely gifted with just a chisel and a hammer. And look at this one. Unfortunately, we won't be able to read this one, but someone has left flowers. So they are being visited. Another beautiful one, and I'm presuming Jay Byrne again. And this one, we have the cherubs, the crucifixion scene. And can we find a date? 1791, just here. Age, it looks like 23. And I am not sure of the name. There is a D-E or a D-A maybe. Maybe Daniel. Daniel Doyle, I think it is. 1791, just there. And you can see the moss on this headstone isn't it beautiful and those cherubs on either side so some very old headstones in here we have some markers there that looks like the legs of a a tabletop tomb there. Look at this beautiful one. These ones, guys, I have found a few of. This colouring, if anyone knows the type of stone this is, please let me know. I love it. It's like a deep wine colour. This is erected by John Mahan in memory of his father, Lawrence. 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day, 1873. It looks like age 72. Also his mother. Sarah, 1881, age 57, also his sister Mary, died 25th of May in 1900, age 47, also his brother James, um, he was 43 when he passed, and I think that's the 1900s there, July the 27th, but just, I don't know whether the camera will pick up the colouring of that stone, absolutely beautiful, and there you see, those gorgeous runes, a beautiful blue sky. But let's keep going. We have beautiful rails here, these wrought iron rails that we all love. And you can see the wild garlic there growing just inside and really all around. But as I said, somebody has come and cleared the area. I don't think I'll be able to read this one. There's a Keating there. All right. Beautiful cross. And then beside it we have that beautiful obelisk with a cross at the very top of it. So let's try and get a bit closer to that one. Pray for the repose of the soul of Reverend Nicholas Lambert, CC who died August 19, sorry, who died 1895, age 45, also his brother, John Lambert, aged 58, when he passed in 1912. And Reverend Nicholas was 45 only when he passed. We have a Patrick Lambert here as well, who died on the 24th of February, 1869, I believe, aged 54, and his wife, Bridget, she died in 1912, aged 83. So this beautiful obelisk memorial here for the Lamberts. And you can see the cross right up at the top. And 
I would say that has been fixed at some stage because it's very seldom that you will find something left on top. We have silver rails here, freshly painted some time ago. But absolutely gorgeous. We have another beautiful one here. Slightly starting to lean. There's Doyle, I think it's John Doyle. 1777, maybe 1771 here, age 33 it looks like. Very hard to read, you can see all that moss and lich in there. Completely taken over that headstone. A little cross on its own. With some more Iron crosses along here. This one, unfortunately, has broken. And this one has actually beautiful designs on it. All these flowers. And once again, writing completely gone. It just doesn't last on these. But all that detail there, absolutely beautiful. As I said, it's a shame that the writing just doesn't seem to, to last on these ones. Another iron one here. And no writing either. So we have a few tombs along here. None of which we can read, unfortunately. We'll just take, there's a kind of a, a path here. It's a little bit slippy to walk on. Some beautiful crosses here as well. And three here in a row. All similar. The last one has sunk right into the ground. Another iron one. See the end of the daffodils are here. Absolutely beautiful. You can hear all the wild birds, we have swans and all on this lake the whole time. This little white one here. William Carty died the 16th of November 1918. His wife Mary, 1932. Their children who died in infancy. William, Eugene, Ellen, Mary, Peter and James, Catherine Morton, died in 1930 and Nicholas Carty 1944. So we have William E, Eugene W, Ellen, Mary, Peter and James. And just at the bottom there, Nicholas Carty who died in the USA the 3rd of February 1944. Now this one has the these lovely wrought iron rails with a gate that is actually open but I don't want to step on the grave so I will go around and see if I can read Thomas Hanrahan 1985 aged the 30 years and of his mother Bridget 1902 age 76 isn't that gorgeous and the rails are still in really really good condition right down to the little gate and a, you know it's still a working gate with a little lock Absolutely beautiful. More crosses just here. One of them are, are broken. 
Now we have markers here. So I'm presuming that these were, were graves. This one has sunk right into the ground. A beautiful cross here. In memory of John J. Parcel, 1919, age 60. And beside John, another beautiful headstone. This one has the lead letters. So sometimes they don't, uh, you know, they, they lose the letters. But this is in loving memory of Nicholas Purcell. June 1917, age just four. Bridget Mary Purcell, 1918, age 23. Mary Kate, 1920, age 20. And Michael Dennis, 1924, aged 18. Also James Jasper, James and Nicholas, who died in infancy. So a whole family there, very, very young. But they have a beautiful headstone. We have sunflowers here on either side. And the, the lead letters are actually all intact, which is lovely to see. But a beautiful memorial there. Absolutely gorgeous. We have more tombs here. This one unfortunately is broken. As is this one. And this is for William Doyle. Who departed his life 1760. I believe it says. It looks like there would have been designs there at the top. I think it's 70, 1760 maybe, but everything else is gone. Pray for the soul of Catherine Malone, 1883, aged 50. This tomb here and a headstone right behind it. Now this is quite unusual because this whole uh, tomb has a plug but the plug actually is not working. It would have set up lights to light up the runes but it is quite unusual to see it at the side of a grave. Another beautiful tomb or a headstone here. This I would say is J. Burn as well. The sun, the moon, the crucifixion. Um, 1796 I can see here. Um, Carl being the surname, 1796, just there. But this place is so open to the elements, it doesn't surprise me that a lot of these, you know, we're just not going to be able to read. Just at the back of the ruins. And our last few headstones. This little one right at the very back. And we would have actually had some sort of cross here and possibly a rail. Loving memory of Bridget Rhine, 1925, aged 86 it looks like. Just here, a new plaque for Grandad Patrick and Anna Agnes Goff and also their daughter Jo. But they are in a beautiful resting place. A huge tomb here and one beside it. And right in the middle, we have this tiny little railed area. I'll just try and get around. Look at that. So possibly a child. I don't see anything inside it, no plaques. Not a little headstone even. And behind that we have two headstones completely covered in ivy. Completely covered. Can barely see them underneath it. So just a beautiful little 
graveyard and the ruins there as well. I'm just going to bring you just to the front and show you where they say mass. So behind me, besides Irish eyes, <laughs> is the ruins of the church. We are now going in under a little archway. And just here, is where they say mass. Hail star of the sea, mother of God and our mother. And what I'm actually going to do is just bring you into this little wooded area. We have a tree full of trinkets and um, I'll just show you now. So much like the well we've seen in Arkandrisk. We even have masks hanging from here, owls, cloth, teddies, photos. Key rings, earrings bracelets, children's toys, rosary beads, mass cards, memorial cards of those who have passed, but also just in this little area. We have like, I suppose, a shrine Nancy Myler, Susan James, almost like a little garden, Mary Ward, we have the Liverpool crest on that plaque, we have swans, fresh flowers, artificial flowers, little lanterns and butterflies, all just in this little beautiful wooded area here. Isn't it gorgeous? So guys, from Our Lady's Island and the graveyard, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. If you like this content, um, comment underneath, helps the channel grow. But for now, take care. God bless for myself and Irish eyes.